Hello everybody, it has come to my attention that a lot of you have been seeing these videos on this channel of Alveus ambassadors at the sanctuary, fundraising for the sanctuary, and then I've seen people in the comments being like, what is it? And they want a tour and they want to see what's going on. So today's just a, this is a tour video. I'm going to show you guys all of the ambassadors enclosures, introduce you to the ambassadors. We're going to hang out with them and I'll tell you a little bit about the facility. Yeah, that's going to be the video. Like and subscribe, follow Alveus everywhere. Please and thank you. I bought this whole property. Austin, Texas, okay, in early 2021. There was very little on this property, even the fencing. We put in all the fencing. All of the enclosures that you're gonna see obviously have come up since then. The first one we're gonna go into is the pasture. This is where we have our donkeys and Winnie the Moo, she's very famous. My horse, Acero, and Stompy. I don't know where everybody is right now. <gasps> I see a chicken. You all know Stompy. It's actually fitting that we started in the pasture because Stompy was our first ambassador. Like a little melon. Little melon man. We got him 2021 as well as a baby. He's almost two. Hello, you're gonna fall off my shoulder. He's sleepy. So this is Stompy. Yes, Stompy lives here. Stompy has a pool. It's being cleaned right now, so it's not full. This is Stompy's pool. This is the best day of my life. You'll notice it is covered in shade cloth. It's a cabana for Stompy. So Stompy has the pool and Stompy has a shade cloth splash pad. You guys remember the splash pad? Yes, of course. We have over here, feed stall, all of the hay and grain and grooming supplies and fly spray and everything that the animals need. Down here, we call this squitchy. This is Winnie's cow wash. Insert clip, Winnie squitchy. <laughs> She's, <laughs> She's gone feral. A viewer, Nate, donated this. It was over a thousand dollars. It's no joke, Winnie loves it. That's Winnie squitchy. This is where everybody hangs out most of the day because it's a hundred freaking degrees out here in Texas. Everybody's in here. Hello, I need to make some introductions. All right, we got two donks. Incoming first donk. Oh, incoming horse as well. This is my horse. His name is Acero. I've had him since I was 12. He is my pet. He doesn't belong to Alveas, he belongs to me. This is Jalapeno. Jalapeno is a donkey rescued from an equine rescue in Central Texas, so nice. His ear is like that, uh, they cut it off for identification. At the feedlot or kill pen, it's another thing that they call it, really sad. Serrano is the other donkey in here. Don't mind the horse. That's Serrano. He was also rescued from a feedlot in Central Texas uh, from a rescue in Central Texas. When I say feedlot, people put livestock that they don't want into a feedlot and then they're bought out for meat. These guys for traditional medicine sometimes, they boil donkey skin and make it into a gel for traditional Chinese medicine that they use for a bunch of stuff and cat kibble, dog kibble, just like cheap meat. So they were both rescued from that. For you, hurry, the horse is gonna get it. Hurry, it's a cookie. Nice. And then, of course, we have Winnie the Moo. You guys know her from the Spa Day video. Was rescued from a beef operation in Oklahoma. She is a Red Angus beef cow. She was going to be slaughtered for beef, and now she lives here. She's a baby cow. That is all of our pasture friends. Again, they like to hang out in the shade down here. And because we put up their hay bags, so we tie up their hay and hang it from the trees so they can hang out in the shade all day. Helps with the heat. And this pasture gets mucked every day. Muck as in we scoop all the poop out of it and remove it from the pasture because they produce a lot of poop. Hi, you want another cookie? Jalapeno's pretty shy, but he's gotten much more brave. We got them in May of 2021. Can I touch? That's so nice. They know I have the cookies. For you. Donk. 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 Delicious. He thinks you have cookies. Do you? <laughs> All right, so that is the pasture. Next is the parrots. This was the first enclosure that was built besides the pasture on this property. Don't worry about this. Hi, Tripper. You want a cookie? Pee wee! Come be in the video really quick. He's coming, just he's kind of slow. Come here, buddy. Come on. Here you go, a cookie. This is Pee Wee McNugget and this is Tripper, they live here. All right, into the parrot aviary. Here we go. Most of our enclosures have vestibule doors, so we are in the vestibule. 
We're, we're in the vestibule right now because we have flighted birds. Uh, so always close one door before you open the other. You guys are probably familiar with the concept. This is the parrot aviary. Okay, it's, it's 20 feet by 20 feet. I'm five feet tall for reference. We have four parrots that live in here. You guys probably already know these parrots or have heard of them or something because they're also super famous. This is Siren. Can you say hello to them? Can you say hi? Just say why. You know. Can you say hello? Hello. That's nice of you. Okay, this is Siren. She's a blue fronted Amazon. This is Mia back here. She's an African gray. They were both rescued. Mia was a surrendered pet in California. Siren was supposed to be a breeding bird at a zoo. Did not breed, it did not lay any eggs and was then abandoned at the zoo. And then we have two macaws as well. The one with all the yellow is Tico. Tico is a blue and gold macaw. Tico was dropped off in a box outside of an SPCA in California. And Miley is a Catalina macaw. That's a hybrid between Tico's breed, blue and gold, and a scarlet macaw, the red parrots. So she was born in captivity, but also was a surrendered pet. Tico, do you want a pistache? Here they go. Do you want a pistache? Can you sing them happy birthday? Birthday. Birthday. Happy birthday, everybody. All these birds did come to us from Michelle Raffin of Pandemonium Aviaries. They were her pets. She took excellent care of them, but she didn't want these birds to outlive her. And so she wanted to make sure they were going somewhere where they'd be really well taken care of. And so she donated them here. Other things in the parrot aviary, we have lots of parrot safe plants to make it feel more natural. We have canna lilies in the middle. Uh, we have Turks caps back in this corner. Uh, we have crepe myrtle over there. This floor is all concrete because it gets hosed out every day. They have these platforms for training. We weigh them on these platforms. Uh, and then obviously they have a bunch of manzanita branches and toys and stuff to play on every day. In here, Siren. Each of the parrots has a room that we are installing AC in and they have radiant heat panels. So that's what that is for the winter. So they can stay warm in here in the winter. We can close them inside um, and just make sure that they're climate controlled and safe because these birds are not native to Texas. They're Central South American birds. Macaw room. Amazing. Happy birthday. We have the parrots to teach people about why they don't necessarily want one as pets. Usually people get them thinking they'll be really cute and then can't handle how loud they are and how much they chew and how much they bite. And they live 60 to 70 years. So it's like having a toddler for 60 to 70 years. A lot of them end up in rescues, but the demand is still high enough to where we're taking them out of the world. So we have the parrots mostly to teach people about the pet trade. Thank you for waiting until I was done to stop. So that is the parrot aviary. Next up, we have the chicken mansion. Okay, the chicken mansion. We have three chickens in here. I don't know if I've done stuff with the chickens on my YouTube channel. I don't think I have. So we have three chickens. Hi, Tripper. Three chickens, Oliver, Nugget, and Henrique. This is Oliver. Oliver was in a reject rooster cage at a feed store, so I got him for $5 because nobody else wanted him. Then Nugget and Henrique are also ambassadors here, um, also both rescues. And we use them to teach people about food labels and how to make smart consumer choices when it comes to the environment. Oh, they have some grass growing, cute, look at this. They have a fan in here. They have misters above us. And then I will show you guys the inside space that the chickens have. The chickens are locked up inside at night to protect them from predators. This is the inside of the chicken coop. There's rubber mats on the floor, they have food, water, and then lots of perching uh, to sleep on. Lots of perching to sleep on. This also gets cleaned out every day. The goats aren't a part of the sanctuary either, they just live here. That's all that's down here. We'll go up, we'll go see the marmosets, foxes, and crows. The next enclosure we have originally was the crow enclosure. It was sponsored by Point Crow. By the way, the parrot enclosure was sponsored by Flim Flam. Um, so his name is on there, their name is on there. This was originally sponsored by Point Crow. It was the original crow enclosure, and now it is the marmoset enclosure. Follow me. We have two marmosets that you have seen in my YouTube videos because we gave them snow cones. So the marmosets have this inside room. They have the same scale as the parrots. We weigh them on this, so they sit up here. And then this is their outdoor space. They love hanging out out here. There's Momo right here. Hi, buddy. 
I do. Which do you want a um, tongue worm? Do you want? Momo's a black tufted marmoset. He doesn't want. Here comes Appa. <laughs> Appa, do you want? You come here. Come on. Come on. You don't even want it. Why are you coming over here? The marmosets uh, rescued from a neglect case in Austin. That's how we got them. But this whole enclosure was set up specifically designed for them, obviously. So we have a lot of removable, changeable ropes that they can swing from. We have a banana tree, pretty cool. Um, we have all these platforms for them to jump on. We have their little ball pit hides. Um, but then also because these are Brazilian monkeys and they're not made to live in Texas climate all the time, they have a climate controlled inside space as well. So kind of like a replica of what they have outside, this room is air conditioned right now and in the winter it'll be heated. Um, hi, Appa, you wanna show them your house? So this is their inside space. Um, Appa, when we got him, had very little use of his back legs and now, as you can see, he's extremely mobile. This is where they sleep at night. They have their blankets in there. You can watch them sleeping on our live cams on Alvea Sanctuary on Twitch, by the way. It's very cute because they cuddle together inside the, the domes. It's really cute to watch. This is some of their enrichment for today. I made this. It has their gel diet in it and some paper strings and mealworms so they have to forage through it to get their diets. Also, most of our enclosures, that's where you'll watch them sleep is through that camera. I think that's it. Okay, bye. And then obviously like storage and sinks and stuff. So the way this whole property works is there's a big kind of teardrop and we're kind of planet zooing it. So we just put enclosures in the open spaces along the path. So this is the second one on the teardrop. This is where we'll build out the rest of the enclosures probably as we go forward. This is the crow enclosure. It was sponsored by Oni Studios and Merc X again. This one is relatively new. It was originally built for Orion, my falcon, who we lost last year. We have a little plaque in here for him. But now it's home to our two American crows, Abbott and Coconut. Abbott, can we do an MTV Cribs, please? Can you say, welcome to my crib? Thank you. This is the crow enclosure. They have an inside space with lots of perching and then they have this outside space as well. Abbott, come show them. Thanks, what do you think? Do you like it here? They have this platform for training and for weighing. And then they have a couple water sources, of course. Uh, they have a big tree perch with lots of different types of perching. This whole thing is shade cloth on the top uh, to protect them both from wild bird droppings and from the sun. But these birds were born here and live in Central Texas, and so they do they do all right. Eh. Eh. They're just mealworms. Yummy. Delicious. I think this is the newest enclosure that we've built here so far. We're pretty proud of it. I like it a lot for them. They have a special window too. So they have a perch and they can sit up there and then look over the top of the enclosure because birds like to be at the highest point. The two crows, they're non-releasable because they were raised by people in captivity. They imprinted on humans, which means that they identify with humans as a species. So they don't know how to take care of themselves, where to migrate to, what to eat, what to be afraid of, where to sleep, you know, everything that it takes to be a bird successfully. They don't have that ability because they were raised by humans incorrectly. And so that's why we have them in captivity. But those are the crows and then the last enclosure is the fox enclosure. Wow, it is 40 by 28? 40 feet by 28 feet or 48 feet by 20 feet. 40, I can't remember the dimensions of everything. It's very large, okay? We have two foxes in here. Finn, who's right here, and Reed, who's over there. They're both American red foxes. Both came from a zoo in California. Finn was a confiscation from the illegal pet trade in California. And Reed was orphaned in the wild, raised by people in California is non-releasable for that reason. And we have the two of them to teach people about both the fur trade and the illegal pet trade. You don't want foxes as pets. They don't work out in your house. It's really unfair to them. And you don't want fox fur because it's a super cruel industry. Big shout out. My friend QT Cinderella, who did this fundraiser. Uh, this enclosure was a whopping $48,000. <laughs> also, all steel. Here's the vestibule. The foxes, before we got them, uh, were in about a five by 10 enclosure that was a concrete pad. So the two of them were in a five by 10. I'm five feet tall. So one of me by two of me. And now they're in a much larger, much better situation. Um, and they're really happy. Finn is again, an American red fox, but he is gray because uh, he was bred for the pet trade. Can you come take a snack? Yum. 
Read the little more, Shy. Here you go. Yum. You want two more? There you go. Here you go. Is it nice? He loves pill pockets. That's all. So, questions that we get a lot about the fox enclosure. One, uh, there is wire buried. Uh, because foxes dig. There's also concrete buried so that they can't dig out because if these foxes were to dig out, they would not make it in the wild. They're non-releasable. So all of the animals at Alveus are non-releasable. If we release them, it would be a death sentence. Uh, so for them, their options are either euthanasia or remaining in captivity. We give them the best quality of life possible and they can teach people about their species, uh, which ends up being really good for the environment, we think. There's Reed. So this was supposed to be the fox's den, okay? we. <laughs> <laughs> we welded some barrels together, covered it with dirt, thinking that they would use the barrels as a den. Instead, they just dug underneath it, and so their den is underneath this right now. We made sure to keep some of the natural trees in here. We have oak here, we have cedar here. Uh, we have this platform. The posts are all cedar from this property. We call this their tree house. It's pretty sweet. They spend a lot of time sleeping up here. The other thing that the foxes have is a inside room. The foxes have AC as well, so in here, is the fox's room with AC. It's a little loud because the AC is running, um, but there's concrete in here. They don't usually choose to go in here. They would rather be outside than inside. Imagine that, but they do have the option to go inside if they get too hot. And then they have live cams too. If you're interested in watching a fox take a nap or your second monitor stream being a fox taking a nap, would highly recommend the Alveus Twitch channel at literally any point of day, any day of the week, because that's what you'll see. They just sleep all day. That's it for animal enclosures. I did miss a couple things because we're doing some renovations. So we have reptiles too. We have snakes and a lizard and a frog and a bunch of insects, but they're all in temporary setups because we're doing renovations to make their spaces better. So I skipped the whole studio and those habitats. Back there, I'm the fox's neighbor. That's my tiny house. My tiny house tour is on this channel if you want to see what my house looks like. I don't really want to go back there right now, but. That is where I live, so that's my commute to work. Okay, this is the nutrition house behind me. This building was here when I purchased the property. I put everything that I've made into streaming and more into buying this property, and Alveus has made it its home, obviously, but this is one of the things that I purchased when I bought the property, because it was already here. So, the nutrition house is where we prep all of our diets and nutrition for the animals and all of their enrichment every day. So we have a prep table, we have a stream cam over here. So sometimes I stream like making diets and enrichment, stuff like that on Twitch. We have a couple rats in here. They have all three levels. <laughs> the rats were supposed to be feeder rats. So they're gonna be snake food. Now we have them here to teach people about rodenticide use and how it affects other wildlife. But as you can see, we give them a lot of hiding places. <laughs> I promise we have rats, I'm not lying. Okay, insert pictures of the rats. Their names are Chips Ahoy and Nilla Wafer. They're having a nap. These are our enrichment supplies. Okay, so we make the animals toys every day to help them engage in natural behaviors, like foraging enrichment, stuff like that. And so we have paper, cardboard, we have like lots of fun things to make enrichment toys out of. So that's all set up here. We have the chinchillas in here. This is Snork. No, oh, stay. And that's Moomin. They are ambassadors, so I can teach people about the fur trade. The fur trade almost wiped out chinchillas in Peru. Now their populations are protected, so they're doing better, but don't buy furs. By the way, the chinchillas and rats both get let out in this whole building every day. This is enrichment, actually, that I prepped today for tomorrow. This is a foraging toy for the parrots. There's nuts and seeds and stuff wrapped up in there. This is going to be for the marmosets, so they have to reach their little monkey hands in there. This is for the rats. There's paper straws and dried carrot bits in there, so they'll chew through that. Different types of feed over here, nuts and stuff. But this is our tragic enrichment pile that's uh, always just teeming with cardboard. We have a ton of cardboard because we use that for a lot of enrichment. Treats like sunflower seeds, the rat foods down there, pistachios, crow kibble, cat kibble, mealworms and then diet prep. Here are animal care checklists. So every day staff goes through and does all of these things and checks them off. It's things like clean the parrots, collect enrichment, food scraps, sweep, hose, crows, collect enrichment, scrub feeding, rats, full blanket change and clean, chinchillas, spot clean, diet preparation for everybody, enrichment preparation for everybody, training sessions, the works. And over here we have a sink. <laughs> 
where we do our dishes. We have our fridge. This is where we have stuff for all the animals' diets. They are labeled organic, whether they're rinsed or not, not rinsed. This is our use first bin. Some diets we have prepped. These are all treats for the monkeys. These are eggs that our chickens lay, but our foxes and crows eat egg, so they eat those. Behind you, we have a bathroom. Bathroom review, 10 out of 10. Thanks for watching. That's it. For those of you that have seen the whole facility already and knew everything, sorry uh, if this was boring. If you haven't seen it, thanks for saying that you wanted to. There's also a tour on the Alveus YouTube channel. So it's kind of, we've already done it. If you want to go see more, there's probably more on that video that I forgot today. But here's your general tour of, of what we do here and the animals we have here. I'm super, super proud of this facility. It's come up really fast. Again, this I found it in 2021, so it's come a long way. When I say I put all the money into streaming <laughs> into this property, I mean, I my card got declined at McDonald's in 2021 because I had no, <laughs> I put, it was very irresponsible. I'm gonna be honest, don't do that. But it ended up being fine, obviously, and that's because of you guys. I'm super grateful. Thank you so much for your support of my channels and Alveas' channels. I know I've been doing a lot with Alveas content lately and I appreciate you guys supporting it and watching it. So yeah, like and subscribe, go check out Alveas. Please go follow it everywhere. We do a bunch of education and a bunch of conservation work on there and I will see you on the next one. Goodbye.